My name is James Graves. Welcome to Night Journey Rewind, the podcast. I got some exciting news for you. I want you to come join us on the 29th of December at 8 o'clock at the Peacock Lounge. We're going to do a pre-New Year's celebration with the fabulous Andrew Dixon. How you doing, bro? Good, how are you? I'm doing great. Hey, I'm really excited. I, I want to, I'm really trying to promote this like a, a New Year's Eve kind of a celebration, although it'll be two days later. But the really tricky thing that I'm loving about this, you're going to be playing the music of Wayne Shorter. Talk about that tribute that you want to do to him. Well, you know, Wayne, Wayne's career, there's so much music to play. So I'm, I'm going to, I'm really going to try to do a little bit of everything. It's impossible to do. Because <laughs> you, you got Blake, you got Miles, you got Weather Report, you got his his last quartet. I mean, right. right. What is it? Oh, no, go ahead. Can you say something else? Okay. Just we'll try to touch on a little bit of all of it. I, I, obviously, we know, uh, well, people that are really into the music and into Wayne Shorter know how instrumental his playing is and his contributions to his music. So there's a lot of great musicians out there, man, that you and I know and, and heard of and have a lot of respect for. So it's just uh, Wayne Shorter, you, you know? So uh, there must be something, is there something that really just intrigues you? Is his music, is his writing, his composing, his playing? What is it? Well, I think, I think his writing for me is what really sticks out. Um, but that being said, some of my favorite favorite stuff is that Live at the Plug Nickel box set. Mm. I think that's kind of maybe my favorite way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it, it, it's you know I do a lot of Coltrane stuff too, and you know my stuff, and it's it's that's a, it's a little more busy. You know, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, Wayne played very melodically. I yeah, he's like. always seemed to be kind of laid back, even on Speak No Evil. Just how, right. how he just kind of cruises into that. It's not like he hits it hard or anything like that. I, I, I think it's nice to have him mixed with like Train and Joe Henderson's, you know, those guys who kind of have a full package. And, you know, he also, man, I, I loved his playing and how he complimented the other musicians when he was with Weather. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what was your, I mean, I mean I, I'm just asking, you know, what it was your appreciation or your evaluation of when he was playing with Weather Report? Um, <laughs> my, my, <laughs> My thing with Weather Report is kind of after after that Jocko documentary, and they talked about how kind of not great Joe Zalman was with a lot of people. <laughs> right, <laughs> kinda, right. I saw that. I saw that documentary. A little bit different thing with Weather Report now, but um, you know Wayne, you know what Wayne brought writing wise is really what I what I care about. Like, we're gonna play this song, um, Sightseeing. Yeah, yeah. One, people don't really know that well. You know, it's not one of the big hits, but um, we're going to do th that tune. Um, yeah, Weather Report's different, because some of it, I, I feel like it's got to be the live stuff for me. Like, the studio stuff's a little cheesy sometimes. I don't know. <laughs> I, well, you know what? It, it, it's interesting that you say that, because I actually, I really do agree with you. They're live performances, and I've seen them live quite a few times. And it just seems like it's just a different type of an energy. Maybe because they're really feeding off each other, they can express themselves a little bit more musically while they're doing a live performance compared to kind of really being in a structured in the recording studios. And two, like I said before, I saw that interview, I mean, I saw that documentary, and I kind of said, wow, Jill Bob knew. I didn't know you were like that. You know, and uh, really, because this guy was just a genius. Jocko was just a genius. Right. On the face. But sometimes you can't contain them. That's why you can't contain a wild animal. I don't mm -hmm. care how many times you put them in the cage. 
And that, that, to me, that's what I took out of that documentary from Jocko, was that, you know, uh, you know, he just, you know, come on, man, play my, you know, play my stuff, and just, you know, stay to this. But, uh, so, um... I think weather is uh, kind of the same as, like, 70s miles. It's like, I want to listen to the live records <laughs> of, you know, 70s miles stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the studio records are great, but they're really know each other a little better on the stage you know exactly exactly i i agree with you but a lot of musicians that uh i'd rather listen to them live and i mean that's even some r&b groups i like listening to them live more so now there are some groups that they sound just as good in the studio as they do live but not everybody's like that <laughs> but uh you know so i'm really excited man, about you performing at uh, the peacock lounge the 29th. Um, so tell us, what should the people expect to hear from Andrew Dixon? Besides, we know you're playing the music of uh, Wayne Shorter. What will people really get out of this performance that you're bringing up? Um, well, um, I'm going to have a, some arrangements and some things. You know, like, like I've, I've taken like Speak No Evil and Witch Hunt and put it together. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, we're going to play some of the Blakey stuff. You know, th- you know. Uh, this is for Albert. Um, one by one that nobody really plays from uh, that live Ugetsu album, Live at Birdland. Which right. Oh, yeah. Heard that. Right. <laughs> That's I haven't a, heard that in years. Uh, great record. Yeah. Um, and Wayne, Wayne's, uh, when Wayne plays, I didn't know what time it was. Like the pallet on there, <laughs> different, different, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I think we're gonna try to kind of play some of the hidden gems of Wayne. You know, everybody's knows yes or no, and you know, people play those tunes all the time, but who plays Lady Day? Who plays Contemplation? Who plays, you know, it's, there, there's a, so many tunes. Um, I, I think, I think I want to play, I, I'm going to play a couple tunes that people know, but you know, I, I want to play a lot of tunes that aren't played as much. I think that's great because as you said, a lot of people probably like a group that comes out for form. They love a lot of new stuff, but they do want to hear some of the stuff that they're really familiar with. And I think that's a great concept as far as you coming in with this show. I'm going to play some stuff that you know about Wayne, but I'm going to play some stuff that Wayne played that you guys don't know about. See if you can dig this, you know. You know, there's so many records, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and, and, you know, if you play something from the Soothsayer, people don't know the Soothsayer. They know, they know Speak No Evil. They, you know, <laughs> they know those records better. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, well, you know, man, it's, this is going to be real exciting. And... Excuse me. Like I said, I want to try to promote this as a a pre New Year's Eve celebration. I want to try to get that type of vibe in. Um, you've got music out, man. I would like you to please give us some information on how to contact you and how to get a hold to you know if they want to get some of your music. Well, I, I just put out um, in July, yeah, July twenty second. My my fourth record, Mind Noise, came out. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can get all my music at uh, RageDixon.com. Everybody calls me Rage out here. It's just the way I play. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, or you can go to Bandcamp, um, Andrew Dixon. Right. Spotify, Andrew Dixon. I mean, okay. it, Apple Music, everything's everywhere. Okay, well, that is so cool. Um, you know, it was funny. You were talking, and I had a thought, and... I wound up having not a memory freeze, but a memory lap. Um, you know, uh, I got to talk briefly. We talked about it off and just uh, really want you to express uh, the knowledge of this musician and how good he was. And that's uh, the late Andrew Spate. Spate sorry. Um, it's a tragic what happened to him. God bless him and the family. Uh, you've played with him before. Talk briefly about his playing and his enthusiasm in this music. 
I mean, he he was a master of the tradition. I mean, he he bebop, hard bop, that was him. You know, if you if you want to hear Cannonball Adderley, you just gotta sit there and listen. I mean, <laughs> he knew Cannonball inside and out. You know, and mm-hmm. you know we kind of come from different parts of this music a little bit, but um, you know, it, it was cool when I did the Coltrane thing that that we talked about on here. Right. Um, a while ago and we met in the middle and we played India together and we played you know Chasing the Train and you know Naima and you know and uh, I got to play Love Supreme you know the entire suite at his house and you know he's, he's very nice very nice uh, I think he, he's, he was very passionate about this music like extremely passionate he would, he would tell you what's up <laughs> he you know he didn't play around this was not no joke for him right you know? He was uh, like what, it, what monks say, straight, no chaser. Right, right. You know, cause, but uh, yeah, it's uh, just continue to keep People him in prayer. For the community, and especially, you know, he was having sessions in Burlingame, like Burlingame, California. <laughs> you know, and he was bringing in, you know, big Yeah. Big yeah. names down there. Yeah. Roy McCurdy, Ralph Moore, Eric Alexander. Eddie, Eddie Henderson. Yeah. Uh, uh, what's that kid, the bass player, David Wong out of New York? So he wasn't joking around. He was very, very, very serious about his music. He was no joke. And, uh, and I love that because he came up with the idea of doing House of Bop because of COVID. Right. And he wanted to keep this music going. So, you know, uh, it was tragic. But, um, Andrew, looking very forward to seeing you on the 29th. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh. Who's your musicians that you're coming that's going to be playing with you? Um, uh, Ian McCurdle, he's uh from the Bay Area, he's from mm-hmm. Oakland. Um, he's a keys player. Um, he went to Oberlin in uh, Ohio, you know Oberlin College, the, mm-hmm. the music school. Um, Aiton Schillinger Hyman, he, he's like 23 year old bass player. He sounds sounds great. He just he just graduated recently from Oakland, I believe. Oh, cool. And, uh, John Arkin on drums. Oh, so you're having a quintet? I thought you were having a quartet. You gonna have a quintet? Quartet. Yeah, yeah. Quartet. Four. Oh, okay. My bag, man. You know. Zero plus me. <laughs> no, okay. yeah. Um. All right. Um. Last thing, man. You do a lot of teaching. Where are you teaching at? I teach in the Peninsula. I teach um, San Francisco, Oakland, Berkeley. You know, I'm, I'm at Berkeley High sometimes. I'm teaching in Piedmont. <laughs> I teach at all the saxophone players at Valley Christian in San Jose. Um, most of the saxophone players at Belmont and Carlmont High School. So I'm all over the place. Um, <laughs> and what is the, the response from your students on this music? Well, it's funny. I was just teaching one of my, my seniors this year. He's a senior in high school, and uh, he just finished all of his uh, college audition stuff. He's about to pick pick his schools he's going to go to. And this morning, we were playing through all these tunes that I was just talking about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm trying to show them the obscure Wayne tunes too. You know, because th- this this kid's pretty special, and he he already knows all this stuff. So you know. Giving him the obscure stuff is great too. Uh, one last question: How do you feel, or since you, especially since you're in the system and teaching these kids this music, how does the future look for the kids, you know, the younger generation, with this music, with our music, with the jazz music, I should say? Um. So, so my thing is a little bit about pushing forward you know like like I think sometimes they tell students just to sound like somebody else for so long and you gotta sound like yourself at the end of the day I mean you're you're never gonna be you're not John Coltrane you're not Wayne Shorter you're not Charlie Parker you know you're you 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 take all this that they give you and then you kind of piece it together and something else you know like like my music is influenced by all sorts of stuff you know i mean jimi hendrix hmm. um um york you know um 
Tribe Called Quest, Diggable Planets, like like I, I take on all of these different genres, you know. I it's, it's you know I try to explore a lot of places. Right. So I, I, I try to push my students to listen to everything, mm -hmm. you know. Right, um, right. You can get stuff out of Stevie Wonder. I mean, you can get out of everybody. <laughs> well, you know that is so true because if I you know if we go back and listen to some of the. Uh, uh, some of our original OGs have become like with Wes McCumming playing the music of the Beatles. Uh, and uh, well, actually like, well, who was it? Ella Fitzgerald that sang the music of the Beatles. But um, a lot of just take those, take those licks and just, and, and just moves it in. I just think it's a positive thing. But I'm kind of glad to hear that because you're absolutely right. And also Andrew brought this up. He said what just pisses him off is that a lot of these kids don't have the exposure as far as they're going out and playing. So they might emulate what they hear on the record, but then they never get a definition or define who they are because they're so busy emulating what they hear. Right, right. And, you know, and I guess another reason there's a lack of places where these kids can actually go out and get the experience of a real live session. So they're really just going off of what the, their teacher tells her and what they listen to on the CD. But you got to get them to come out too. You know, I, I played on uh, Thursday night, my quartet played. And I told all my students, come on, there's a jam session. Yeah, well, that's good. That's right good. Right after me. Yeah, because yeah. I know back in the One day. One student came. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. Is that? Yeah, so, but then that student that came, he must have been serious about the music, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Serious, yeah, yeah. That's, that's usually, that's how you can weed out the ones that really want to do it and the ones that just, I'm just trying to do something, be just half, be able to say I can play this instrument. Exactly. All right, brother. I thank you so much. You know, mm -hmm. looking forward, looking really forward to uh, your performance on the 29th of this month at uh, the Peacock Lounge, 552 Haight Avenue, the Lower Haight Avenue, in San Francisco, California. I'll give you more information a little later. But Andrew, thank you so much, man. Looking forward to seeing you too, and we'll talk real soon. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, man. Take care.